we are going to have our first talk with a very good friend of mine. He's a drummer and a CEO. And he plays with one of the most renowned bands in the UK. I'm talking about no other than Steven Asamwadia from the composers. And he's going to give us a talk on the business side of things. Yeah? So let's welcome our brother, Steven Asamwadia. Sorry, guys. Just I'm tired. I'm tired. How you guys doing? Everyone cool, yeah? Right, right, right. I just say no. I'm not playing anything today, cause I'm clock watching. First lesson, be on time. We said 12. It's now <laughs> one fifteen. But um, yeah, Joe, thank you very much for being here. You guys know me and Joe. We're always together playing. So even though whatever I'm doing, I have to stop and be here. Do you know what I mean? To be a part of the event. And like he's saying, you got all these guys. If you don't know Steve Miller. You need to know Steve Miller. You got Junior here all the way from, someone said Manhattan, but he's actually from Boston. He's from Worcester, actually. We got Prince from Ghana. We got Blue Doe. Joe's gonna be doing some stuff as well. And funny enough, these are actually guys, like, before I actually met them, I actually knew who all of them were. I used to watch all of them. Steve Miller's probably the first one that can vouch. Like, I was always spying when they were doing, like, Sonny Badu back in the day. I was always spying. I always knew Joe Wilson from when he was like, how does he, when he had that red Yamaha, and I think the battery was even broken in the bit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I, I knew all these guys, so to obviously grow up and these guys are like friends and brothers is, is definitely a privilege. So um, like Joe was saying, just a bit about myself. As you say, my name's Steven, I work in, I said I work, I play in the composers. Well, that's my job anyway, I play in the composers. You know, for those of you who don't know, we are a four piece band. You know, we do a lot of stuff. We, we tour with different acts. We tour by ourselves. We produce music, music consultants, and so on and so forth. And then aside from that, too, I, I run a company called Future Music Services. We do a lot of things as well. Like, I teach. I got one of my... This is actually one of my students. And he, he actually comes everywhere. He's someone, like, I admire because he's always, like, seeking to learn new things. And, you know, other stuff like production. I run a studio. And all these other little things. So... Just kind of tying it all in. One thing I'm very, very big on when it comes to music is the business aspect of music. And I think that's what a lot of us as young up and coming musicians, we lack in that area. And I think that's why we kind of run into a lot of problems. Like when we're trying to, you know, kind of come up in the industry and we, we don't really understand why is this not working this a certain way or how come this guy's getting paid X amount of money, but I'm not getting paid. And, you know what I mean? That it seems it seems so far fetched, and I think what it kind of tends to do is it kind of. Sorry, am I talking fast? That like everyone's just looking at me like. And also, I say this: I really, when I do these things, I like to interact with people. So please, 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 like, have your questions. Like, if I ask for questions, don't just look at me because then I just feel like I've spoken rubbish for the whole time. But um, yeah, so I think I think the music as the aspect of business in music, personally to me, I think actually is 70% of the industry and your playing aspect is probably 30%. That's my personal opinion anyway. And I think a lot of, I see, I see a lot of guys like nowadays, everyone is so focused on, I need to be the sickest drummer, I need the sickest chops, I need to be the sickest bass player, I need to be the sickest keys player. And everybody's Instagram is just filled with videos of the the craziest chords the crazy which is cool don't get me don't get me wrong which is cool but from 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 my perspective if I'm like a musical director or a producer that I'm looking for a drummer for a job if I go on your page and all I can see is a whole heap of I'm just gonna be like can you actually play though like can I put you in a situation where you can just play music do you know what I'm saying? So that's, this is the first point I kind of want to touch on, which is, you know, your musicality as a musician and your, your library, should I say, as a musician. When you read books, it's a chapter. If you read a storybook, they don't give you 
the they don't give you the bulk of the story or the the like main part of the story at the beginning. However, it takes you through a journey kind of thing. And as a musician, that's what you want to be able to do in your library. You want to be able to show like, okay, chapter one of me, I know how to just literally sit down and play a basic groove, one and three on the kick, two and four on the snare, that's it. I can do that for 10 minutes and I'm not going to itch to play some kind of chop. Chapter two, I know how to, you know, maybe incorporate a simple feel Chapter three, if you tell me to play a drum solo, I can play a drum solo, but I can approach it as a musician, not a drummer, meaning somewhat I can listen to what the keys player is doing, I can listen to what the bass player is doing and kind of play my solo around the song versus if you're playing like a ballad song, because sometimes you might get a solo on a song like that, but does it really require you to come and sit down and play for the whole time? No, it doesn't. Chapter four might be... As a musician, you know when to, your ears are big, like we say this thing, big ears, and I believe, does anyone here read music? Anyone actually here read music? No? No one? A bit? All right, cool. So in this day and age, that's not really a popular thing anymore. It's the ears, the, the playing by ears what's become popular. And that's where, you know, you really need to exercise the things of like working with other musicians. Because if I've got a bass player here, a keyboard player and a guitarist, I need to understand you know, you guys might have heard the term, pick your spaces. So in a situation where we're playing a song, if I want to play a fill in a certain place, is it going to clash? Because it's the keyboard player playing like a cluster chord where that needs to shine. But if I'm playing over him, we're fighting each other. Or if a bass player is playing a lick, are we fighting each other? Do you know what I'm saying? So you need to kind of have those things in your mind of knowing when to hold back and knowing when to take your spaces. That's what matures you personally as a musician you know and I think I've, I've kind of grasped that concept a lot more working in a band with other musicians versus just sitting in my room playing to songs trying to impress everybody on the internet because think about it if you've got a hundred thousand views on YouTube with everyone in your comments saying yeah you're so sick but that doesn't reflect in your bank account and at the end of the day do you want views or do you want money in your bank account? Do you know what I'm saying? And and that's just that's just the, the like that's just the rawness of it. Like a lot of, I know a lot of musicians personally, like they are so sick, like you have no idea. Like and you probably even know some of them as well. But when it comes down to it, these are the guys that actually message me a lot, like, bro, I'm not getting any gigs. How do I get gigs? And I'm just like, bro, you need to turn it down. Turn it down. Like you're you're doing a lot more of the flashy stuff than the stuff that really, really matters. Do you know what I'm saying? Stuff like the studio, Junior over here, not this Junior, Bludeau Junior, the drummer, he is a perfect example of someone like, he, he's really grasped the concept of a distinctive sound in the studio. Like, I can hear a song and I know it's him playing. The same with Joe. Like, you see, I messaged you the other day, I heard a song, someone played it to me, and I was like, you played on this, right? And he was like, yeah. So th these are, another, this is another thing, you, you have to, this would be like chapter six in your book, widening your, you know, your kind of, what's the right word to use, your different perspectives of your playing, because the thing with music, music is very seasonal, do you know what I'm saying, like not, and not, what well you have to understand, how many drummers are you, who plays drums, one, two, three, four, five, you can raise your hands, no one's going to cut your hand, raise them high. Cool, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six drummers, yeah? I'm gonna be so real with all of you. You're not all gonna play on an arena tour. That's just the reality. The, the industry is way too small for that. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, that's not to discourage you, but that just might be, that's not your lane. Do you know what I'm saying? Your lane might actually be to play in the arenas. Your lane might actually be to play in the theaters. Yours might be, to be a studio drummer, yours might be to be an educator, and yours might be to be a sick church musician. Now, that doesn't mean the guy playing in the arena is not going to be the richest, or the guy playing in the church is going to be the richest, because at the end of the day, it's relative. Just like I was saying, just because you're in an arena, and that's what looks really cool on Instagram and the rest, you'll be so shocked. Some of those guys are going out there for next to nothing, just to say, I played in an arena. Do you know what I'm saying? I know people that just for the, I did this, I did that, I'm the one that did this, they would rather go and do that to have that on their belt when, to me personally, I would rather just 
if it means I'd rather even play in the church and get more than that, I'd rather do that. Do you know what I'm saying? So there comes a point as well as a musician, you need to kind of, it's like a life lesson. You stay in your lane, do you know what I'm saying? You kind of need to understand what's my strong point. Is my strong point. And some people are fortunate, i.e. Blue Doe. You can't go to Ghana and try and play a gig without him being the first choice. Do you know what I'm saying? The same, since he's been here, he's even called me like, yo, I need to get in the studio. He's got people from Ghana calling him that, yo, can you play on my song? There's definitely, I can name you about 10 other drummers in Ghana, right? But for whatever reason, they're still calling him. And that's the mark he's kind of made because, you know, he's taken time to, okay, he's focused on the live side. Cool, he's got that on lock. There's no gospel gig that happens without this guy. I promise you, if I'm wrong, someone correct me. Not one gospel gig takes place without this guy, big or small. He's now the studio guy. Do you know what I'm saying? So before you know it, he would have monopolized the whole thing. And then he has, he then has the power to, no, do you know what? I can't do this. This guy's actually really cool. And then that's how, that's how we kind of do the thing. Do you know what I'm saying? But you also have some people who are very selfish and one man can't do everything. That's, that's one thing I've also learned as well. You kind of have to just know, if I know your strength is, this guy's really actually good at jazz. If a jazz gig comes my way and I know I can't do it, there's no harm in giving him an opportunity to go and do it. Do you know what I'm saying? If a French guy calls me, I can't actually play this stuff. No, this guy's really cool. I'd rather send him to go and do it. Do you know what I'm saying? There's, there's no harm in these things. But I think, and you know, I think drummers more than anybody, I think we do that a lot. Like, we like to... If it means there's four services in that one Sunday and one finishes at half one and one starts at two, you know from Friday you're not making it. You know it already. But because of that extra 80 pound or whatever, you're going to force yourself to go and do it rather than just saying, do you know what, bro, this is there. Do you want to do it kind of thing? Share the load. Do you know what I'm saying? That's, I think that's one thing that's really helped me as well, which is now going on to my next point, relationships. That's, that's I think... In music, that's probably 60% of the battle, like relationships with people. Like, I think personally for me, where I am today, and I don't, I haven't, I personally haven't gone halfway of where I want to be in music, but I would definitely say a good majority of it has just been because of relationships and the kind of relationships that I've built and the kind of relationships that I've kept with people. Like, for example, if you know me properly, I started out doing a lot of the, like, local gospel gigs in the UK. That's where... I actually began, that's where I managed to meet this person and that person and that person, but somehow this person knew someone in pop and he introduced, and then before I knew it, I was diverting into a different lane. But till today, I promise you, I still keep those relationships. If I'm in the country, if I'm free, I will still go and do those gigs, do you know what I'm saying? I don't feel, you know, thankfully, I've been able to do like a lot of things and travel and do stuff, but I always have in the back of my head, like, these are the people that, like I'm saying, someone like Steve Miller, these are the people that I used to watch and I used to look up to. So if Steve Miller calls me today to do a gig, I'm gonna, if I'm free to do it, I will say yes. Do you know what I mean? And it doesn't take anything away from what I've done or, you know, it doesn't tarnish anything I've done. But what it actually does, it shows your integrity as a person. And, and someone will call you simply based on you know, this guy's reliable. This guy will turn up. He's going to do what he needs to do when he needs to do it. And I can trust him. Do you know what I'm saying? That's, that's another, another very big thing in, in this thing that I think a lot of us miss. Like, we think these little, little details are just whatever. You know, as, as I've gone on, I've, I've learned these things where there's really good musicians, but they lack the, the small things. And these aren't even skills music can teach you. This is things life teaches you. Turn up on time, be a cool person with people, you know, have the right gear. Like, this is your, this is your money at the end of the day. Think about it. If you hire a plumber to come to your house and he says to you, oh, it's 300 pounds for the job. And he turns up, sorry, mate, do you have pliers? Oh, do you have a spanner? You're going to be like, ah, well, why are you charging me this kind of money? You don't even have tools to do the job. So if you now walk into a gig and it's, it's a gig where, it requires you, oh, sorry, I don't have drums. I've seen people come with no sticks before, and I'm, I'm literally looking like, does this even make sense? Like, you, you actually turned up to a rehearsal and you didn't have sticks. So what was you coming to do? Like, if there was no other drummer in the room, what would you have done? And we was in an area where there's no music shop. 
So I was just thinking to myself, like, are you, are you actually being serious? You came here with no, even if you come with broken sticks, I'm still, I'll probably look at you worse. Like, you've come here with broken sticks. So to me, then it's just like, you're not ready for what you think you're ready for because you just don't take your job seriously. Do you know what I'm saying? So now let me now bring it into the title of the thing, the church side, right? Now, I think this is where we have all, we are either having, have had, or will have battles with churches. There's a pastor here, so I'm not even going to look at him when I'm saying this because he's definitely experienced everything I'm about to say, but I hope I don't tread on any toes. Now, I feel like, Musicians and pastors, there's a big, I don't know any, like, there's a very few pastors that can say, do you know what, this one musician, he's, he's stuck by me and he's, he's been faithful from the day he came here up until present day. And I think this is simply because we let money, which is a very, very of course I understand, we let money just kind of deviate why we're there. Now, First things first, this is what I would say. If you have a home church and you don't serve in your home church and you leave your home church to go on elsewhere, that's a wrong move from the jump. Do you know what I'm saying? That is a wrong move. Personally to me, this is how I see it. If my home church is from 12 to 2 and I go and play at another church from 3 to 5, the 3 to 5, that's work. Do you know what I'm saying? So technically, you are inclined to say to the pastor, if he doesn't pay you. I don't really have a reason to be here. Do you know what I'm saying? Unless it's obviously some some individuals like myself, I have relationships with some other pastors. So aside from my actual church, I don't mind going to this church to do this. I don't mind going to this church to do that. But then let me now link it back to what I was saying before of why should, let's say he calls you to come and play for his service and he's told you his service starts at three o'clock and you've turned up at, 3.45, and then you've played, you've even missed worship, you've just got in there for the praise, but you just about got in there, you play, as soon as he starts preaching, you're outside, and then, I don't care what no one says, everybody has been a victim of this, and they say offering, and someone texts you, and then you're now running to get back there, and then after the service, you're going to go and stand right in front of him, where's my money, should he pay you, or if he turned around and said, you know what, because it's happened, if he turns around and says, you know what, um, yeah, our agreement was 80, but honestly, I don't like how you, you did yourself today. So take 50. Are you gonna stand? You're going to stand there and get angry, right? You're all going to kick up. Sometimes musicians even know how to do the fighting to a point where a church member has to come involved and, and, and stop the whole thing. But is he wrong in that? No, he's not. Because what you have to understand is he's running something, right? It's church, yes, but I take it like this. He's technically running an operation. So... At all points, everything has to align. A musician is a part of it. You don't realize that music, I promise you, if you go to a church where the music is bad, you won't feel the preaching. That, that's how I personally I see it. So those two things go hand in hand. So And musicians were a very, very big part of that. If a church, I'm telling you, when I go to churches with bad musicians, my ears are bleeding. Like I'm just sitting there like, this is bad. Like This is so bad. And then it reflects in the rest of the service. That's why pastors are always looking for the best musicians in their church. And, and they always want to, when they find good musicians, they will do anything to keep them. And it, it pains them rather when the musician says, oh, you know, I have to leave. And you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, what you have to understand is if, if you understand the service it is that you're doing, forget the pastor, it's to God at the end of the day. And you can't, you can't be rewarded it's like being a Christian, right? Being a Christian, a lot of us, like, we don't do things in the right way, but then when we need something, then we're praying. But it's like, hmm, so now, now you need me, but when I needed you to do the day-to-day -day things, you wasn't doing it. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, with the, with the church stuff, it's very delicate. Do you know what I'm saying? And you have to be careful with, like, it's not because it's not your church. So, oh, okay, yeah preaching now, I'm going outside. I'm, we all do it. We've all done it. I don't, if you tell me you haven't done it, you're a liar. I'm going to go and get food now. You, re you remember we did one gig? We did one gig. We, went to, we just went to play. This wasn't even a service. We went to play, and we finished playing the first set. We said, let's go and eat. We went to McDonald's, came back. We were standing there. One pastor walked past. He didn't even say hello to us. In his preaching, he insulted us. I swear to you. And we were just like, ah. 
And then we was getting angry. We was all getting angry. But then when we thought about it, we was like, no, it's true. It's wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? There's, you've come for a service at the end of the day. So doing those things it technically is wrong. There's no harm in just sitting down. It's respect at the end of the day. And, and pastors, like, they, they, it makes them a bit uneasy when, like, people are walking around during service and stuff. And, you know, if we're outside laughing and joking, we've all done it before. I keep saying it. No one can lie to me. Every musician has done it. Do you know what I'm saying? So these are the little things at the end of the day, like I was saying about the plumber. If the plumber comes and he hasn't got his tools, why should I pay him the same? If you come and you're disrupting my service, you've come late, you don't turn up with this, you don't turn up with that, why should I pay you this, the money you've asked for? Do you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's another thing, like, you know, we have to be very, very, very careful of in how we deal with people and present ourselves as musicians. Sorry, and then the next thing I want to talk about is, again, money and being paid and the rest of it. I think a lot of us struggle with, because I, I get asked a lot, like, not how much do I get paid, but, oh, okay, I've been called for this, how much should I charge? And, and you don't know what's a sensible amount of money. Now, you have to see like this, right? In music, music is actually, it's an industry, like how we have travel, how we have agriculture and all these things and you know all these different places they have unions that you know if something isn't going right you can report it to the union now i don't know actually do many of you know there's actually a musician's union i don't know if those who probably go to like music unions you might know about that you see first time you're hearing it i wish i had the card i'd even show you there's a musician's union card and that union actually fights for musicians so there's a minimum amount you should be paid and there's a, a length of time that if you haven't been paid in this length of time, you are actually eligible to charge more. I bet half of you didn't know that. Everyone's signing up today, watch. Everyone's going to sign up today. So just going off of the musicians' union rates, I believe it's for a rehearsal, it's minimum of £125, and for a gig, it's a minimum of £150. Now, let me just say this. That doesn't apply to gospel, so just put that one to the side for now. That one is between you and the artist, but I'm just saying on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, these, these things are, in, and on top of that, you have a, um, a per diem. You guys know what per diem is? No? Yes? No? So a per diem is like basically like an allowance. So when you, you know, you tour, you do these things, maybe it's like 30, depending on the artist, £25 a day, £30 a day. If you're on a really big gig, you might even get £50, £60. A, some gigs, £100, £100 a day. And that's simply for food, drink, for some people's cigarettes, snack, newspaper, whatever. That's your personal allowance per day. Now, when you're given this money, obviously, at the end of it, you invoice all of this. The whole purpose of it is to create an industry where you know, you can be taxed and all of that because musicians are, this is actually our job. This is how some of us actually, I'm a full-time musician. So at all times, I need to make sure I'm being paid the right amount of money. If a taxman wants to come, look, this is how much I made. So this is actually only, I'm self-employed. This is actually only how much you can take from me. Do you know what I'm saying? So these little things. So how much should you charge on a gig? Well, you have to weigh it up. Does it make sense for you to agree to a gig for 50 pound? If you ask me, no. Why? How much does a travel card, a day travel card cost? 12 pound? Is it 12 pound? I don't know, someone, I don't know. Day travel card is about 12 pound, right? Roughly 12 pound. So from that 50, we're down to 38 pound, yeah? You probably have to get to a gig at about one o'clock for a sound check and the rest. So you're gonna get that one o'clock, let's say between one and three, you're gonna be hungry, you spend about 10 pound on the Chinese, 28 pound. After the gig, you're probably going to be hungry again, another 10 pound, 18 pound. Depending on where the gig is, you might have to take an Uber home. Average Uber price is about 20 pound. So at the end of the gig, how much? Minus two pound. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You're now at minus two pound. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. But people, like I'm saying, people are out here agreeing these numbers just to be able to say, I did this gig, I did that gig. It's not worth your time. Versus, cool, 150 pound. All right, between one and three, I'm hungry. 10 pound, 140. Okay, six to nine, I'm hungry again. 130, Uber home, 20. 
Fuck it, 110 pound home. Better, isn't it? Right, than minus two pound. <laughs> you can't even pay your phone bill with that. So, and then you'd probably ask, how do you now start charging 250 pound a gig? I know some people, they get paid about 800 pound a gig. Do you know what I'm saying? How'd you get up to that? At the end of the day, as a self-employed person in music, you're a creative. And creatives, it's always about your branding. Do you know what I mean? So you as a person kind of always have to have in the back of your head that you kind of need to brand yourself a certain way. So I'm, I'm talking like, it's not even about how it looks on the outside, but the internal side of you. So, okay, okay cool. Gig starts at 12. And I'm going to be so honest with you. Yeah? I'm giving you these tips. I don't do all of these because I'm a bit comfortable in the environment I work in because technically it's my friends and stuff, so whatever. But if I am working with someone else, these are things I apply. If it starts at 12, I'm going to aim for 11.45. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not aiming for 12. There's a saying, if you're on time, you're late. Do you know what I'm saying? So if it's 12, I'm going to aim for 11.45. And then even if I don't need to take my stuff, I'll take it anyway. I'll bring more than I need to and then just... If you don't drive or, you know, stuff like that, understandable. But you can make it, in some situations, you can actually tell them, look, I want to come with all my stuff. They might just get you a cab, you bring it. You bring all your stuff and they'll look at it, like, oh, okay, cool, this guy's serious. Like, oh, okay, cool. He's got everything there. Have you learned the songs to the T? Like, not, oh, like, I've just skimmed over it. Oh, how does this one go again? No. They call the song straight away. You're playing the song from beginning to end, not one mess up. Do you know what I'm saying? I promise you, start little, little things like that, yeah? Music is, is very small. Do you know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of people in it. So it's like all the managers know each other, all the musical directors know each other, all the producers know each other. So if I'm a producer sitting there and maybe I go to Joe and I'm like, yo, I need a drummer. Like, who's a good drummer? Maybe he's worked with you like three times and every time you came on point. He's going to refer me to you. And I'll be like, because I trust him, I'll be like, are you sure about this guy? he be like, yeah. Are you sure, bro? Cool. You come, you apply the same thing. Now you've got technically two, you've got two clients. Do you know what I'm saying? We're both clients. So you might do a good job. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I really like you. And then you might turn around and say, yeah, if there's anything, you know, anything going, just let me know. I'll be like, yeah, cool, no problem, bro. So then you've now got two clients. So maybe if I have two gigs in a week, he has two gigs in a week, and we're calling you for all of them. If you're averaging 150 pounds, 600 pounds a week, times four, 2.4 in a month, you're making more than the average job on the road. All because you just have, as Joe was saying, the fundamentals to it. You know how to turn up on time. You learn the material. You're good. Even I promise you, yeah, this might sound funny, but I'm being so serious, yeah? There's a saying that drummers always smell, yeah? I promise you, like, I know a guy that's been fired from a tour because his hygiene was terrible. Like, it's facts. Like, he, you can't go, think about it. You go on a tour, like, I've just, I've just finished a tour and I was away for two months. So I'm basically living with other people for two months. We, and you know, the thing is, everyone in your respective home, everyone does things differently, do you know what I mean? Maybe, like, in your house, it's custom to when you hand wash your boxes and then you put it on the heater. It's not every way you can do that. In my house, I don't do that. So if I see someone do that, it'll be like, hey, my guy, like, so you have to understand these things like hygiene and stuff. You're around people at the end of the day. Like, there's no harm in, as soon as you finish playing, just turn around ch -ch -ch -ch, before you talk to anyone, before you come chewing gum in your mouth. Because why should I sit on a tour bus or a plane with you for two months and ah, every day this guy stinks? Man. Like, what's this? This guy smells. We're sharing a hotel room. Oh, I walk, his boxes are here. His socks are, you're just a mess. At the end of the day, all that does is I can go to the manager and be like, do you know what? I don't feel comfortable working with this guy, you know? And then do you know what that's going to happen? Before you know it, someone's just going to pull you to the side. Yeah, this isn't really working out, you know? Mate, we're going to we're gonna have to let you go, man. They won't tell you the reason. No, and you're, that's what I said. You're going to laugh, but they won't tell you the reason why. And this is the thing. Drummers, again, you come off the tour and be like... Yeah, the management was weird, man. No, 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 no you stink. That's why he, that, that's why you was taken off. You, you smell. Do you know what I'm saying? You smell, you're not proper. And I, Listen, there's one drum. I won't even say his name. You guys, he did one tour, yeah, I swear to you. His shoulders were here when he finished. They were here. This guy hasn't toured again for like four years. I promise you. And he just, he even moved out of the country. 
And every time I see him, I'm like, oh, so how's it going? Yeah, man, cool, just doing some online business. And No, you was a drummer. When you finished that tour, you was the UK's hottest. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so these things, and, you know, you, can, you guys can see, like, the drummers that work. You have people like Matthew Brown, Mikkel. Mikkel. Those are two good examples. You see, I don't know how many of you guys know Mikkel, but Mikkel plays with, like, a reggae artist. I promise you, that guy hasn't stopped for, like, three years. Crazy. But three years, just touring, 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 touring. Matthew Brown, for example. One artist, next artist, next artist. Where's Tim? I saw Tim walking. Tim, recently, Tim has just been from one artist to the next. Tim just did O2 the other day with Wizkid. One artist to the next artist to the next artist to the next artist. And you guys can see a repeated pattern. Why do these guys keep getting called? For example, the Wizkid thing Tim did, I, they asked me about like who's a good drummer. And I said, Tim. Tim, Tim, I vouched for Tim on the, no, it wasn't even that. I vouched for him for something else. And when they were looking for a drummer for whiskey, they said, no, this guy's, this guy's really good. He did, I don't even see the guy anymore. Like, this guy's just always doing something. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's because we have a good relationship. I see his work ethic. I can vouch for him. But at the end of the day, if he goes and he messes up, who does it fall back on? Me. You referred me a bad person, bro. And then, technically, I've tarnished my relationship as well. Do you know what I'm saying? So, these are just things. I didn't see anyone writing anything. It's not a classroom anyway, but if you take it, take it. If you won't, maybe you'll be the drummer that gets fired for smelling. That's your own prerogative. <laughs> but, you know, these, these are just some things that I've learned, you know, along the time that I've been doing music. And I think it's very, very important to share these things with you guys because we all kind of have different journeys in this music thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying, some of us have been very prominent in studios, some in the live, and, you know, we learn different lessons from different environments. And, you know, for you guys that are, I mean, I don't even know all of you. Some of you might actually be, like, very big musicians in your own world. Do you know what I'm saying? But for you guys that are coming up, I believe these are things that maybe it might not be, maybe everything I've said is wrong, but for me personally, anyway, if you apply these things, I'm very, very sure that you're going to see the results and you're going to reap. It says in the Bible, you reap the fruits of your labor at the end of the day. Music is a, yes, I go to church, yes. Music, music is, is, is trust me, it's hard, man. And I, I was actually telling someone the other day, like, I actually, you know, thank God that I've never actually, I don't even have a CV. Like, I've never applied for a job to work in JD. Like, I've always, from about 14, you know, I've always played music full time. This has, this, anything you see me with is because of this. Do you know what I mean? Nothing else. So, actually, like, I'm thankful that, you know, I've been able to be in environments where I can learn all these different things and, you know, from these guys, watching these guys. So, definitely, like, being in a room like this, I'm actually going to run off as soon as I finish. But make sure you soak as much as you can from these guys because, trust me, it's not every day you're going to get so many different talents in one place and get so much knowledge from them for free, for five pounds. I don't, five pound is what you can't buy nothing for five pound these days. But we're giving you millions of pounds worth of knowledge, knowledge that can make you millions of pounds for five pound. So when you make the millions, just give us the five pound back. That's all we're asking for, and, and that's it. Um, does anyone have any questions? Remember, I said please don't leave me at this point. It can be anything. Go on, bro. <laughs> Anything in music, it doesn't even have to be about drums or whatever. <laughs> if someone calls you for a gig, mm -hmm. no, for a rehearsals mm -hmm. first, and they called you at 10, 50, mm -hmm. and they told you that the, uh, the rehearsals is at 12, mm -hmm. and you just got an hour to rehearse 40 songs, what would you do? 40 songs? Yeah. Shall I tell you the reality what I'm going to do? I'm a professional. I'm going to sit, I'm going to tell him, all right, you give me an hour and 10 minutes to learn 40 songs. However, I'm a professional. I'm going to skim through the songs literally as quickly as I can because it's patterns. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, music repeats itself. Intro, verse, chorus. Chorus is going to come again. Verse is probably going to be the same. It's probably going to be a breakdown. That's it. Literally, laptop, iPad, phone, notebook, whatever. Personally, I'm old-fashioned. I like to write. So literally, intro, eight bars, bracket, toms. Um, verse one, bracket. 16 bars, kick on one, snare on two. Do you know what I'm saying? Quick, 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 quick. And then you be honest. Do you know what I'm saying? If I get there by 12, uh, yeah, bro, um, sorry. I, 
not sorry, not sorry, because you only called me an hour ago, but I only actually managed to get through 15 of the songs. So let's just manage. And then we, do you know what I mean? We work together and then we move on. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like I'm saying, that's a perfect example of showing your, your professionalism and your competence as a musician. Like I can put you in any situation and you're, you're going to pull through. Sometimes, trust me, there's gigs, yeah, where you're not going to get a rehearsal. Like, it's literally come there and play. Like, these are the songs. The first time we're going to hear you play is actually on the stage. We've all been in that situation. Are you going to say no? You're not. You're going to do it, and you're going to try and do it well. So that's my answer to that question. And as well, um, some people say that getting paid in church is bad. Getting paid in church is bad? Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Can you turn the lows up on the mic? Okay. Here's, here's my personal view on it. I might be wrong. I might not be in line with the Bible, but this is just my personal view, and I haven't run into any problems with it. If it's my home church, I'm not going to hold anyone's neck to say, pay me, right? An agreement, personally, I have at my home church is, you don't have to pay me. If, if you want to... If I give you £10 right now, it's not a lot, but you'll take it anyway. you just take it because it's money. However, in my, in my church, I'm always like, look, I'm a full-time musician. So it's not technically your, every church, the average is about £70. It's not your £70 that I'm trying to build my house on at the end of the day because I'm a full-time musician. So where I make my money is going on tour and so on and so forth. So an agreement I have is, look, I will serve here happily for free. Just give me the leeway. When I have to go, I need to go and come back. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's just an agreement we have, and they're fine with it. Now, if it's not your church, this is not your church, and the pastor, oh, yeah, I saw you on Facebook. You're really good, man. Like, come to my church. Like, nah, nah, nah. Or after the gig, tell hey, you're really good, man. Come to my church. How much you paying? That, that's me, like, because... And then they, it's, to me, it's this, that's the same way I would get a gig. If, if I was playing a gig and a musical director saw me, you're not going to call me for a gig to come and do it for free. So it's the same with a pastor. Like, I don't actually go to your church unless I like you as a pastor and I want to join your church. At that point, I'm not, I'd, I'm a member. I'm not really eligible to pay. Because the thing is, churches have staff. Do you know what I'm saying? There's some churches, like I was saying to you guys earlier, some people are actually full-time church musicians and they actually paid a salary to serve in the church. Like an actual, like I know a guy, he makes about 25 grand a year from, and his, it's an agreement. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, you have to be there. It's like a job, you know what I'm saying? So it all depends on the agreements. It's not wrong. This def, don't feel bad for, I know a lot of people like, they're shy to charge pastors, but don't feel shy doing it. You know what I'm saying? If it's not your church anyway, I haven't said anything wrong, have I? No. He won't call me again, I promise. <laughs> he won't call me again. But what, what I'm saying is, like, there, there's some church, and there's some pastors, like, I've really seen some pastors love music so much. There's a, there's a church, um, Karis. He loves music so much, yeah? Like, he invests so much in the music. Like, if you go and see, the, you'll be shocked. Like, I went to the church and I saw the gear and I was like, why is this in the church? Do you know what I'm saying? I went to his house for a meeting. The first question he asked me is, oh, so when you saw the instruments, do we need anything else? I was like, you have more than enough. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's some churches, they just, whatever, like I was saying, whatever they have to do to keep you, they will do it. And there's some pastors, they just don't care. Just come and play and be going. Take the, however much the offering gave us, I'll give you a small bit out of it and be going. So it's, it's relative. Every church is different. Anyone else? Last question, sorry. Oh, yeah, go on, bro. If a church called you to play and they don't have the facility for that to pay you, mm -hmm. like, what would you do? That one, my brother, it depends on your heart. How, how is your heart set up? Do you have a good heart? Personally, I have a good heart. I have a very good heart. Someone was even telling me yesterday, Stephen, you're very naive. But my heart is set up so much that if, if I really just like how you approach me, like you approach me very nicely and you respect. Because you know some pastors, I think, they have a habit of it's like, you should be in my church. Like my church is where you need to be. I'm not going to pay you, but be there. It's like, what do I care? I don't care. Do you know what I'm saying? So if, if it's like, 
You know, and some pastors are very wise also, like, I think I even had one the other day. Oh, you know, we're having a special service. We want the music to be nice, so can you come? We don't have a lot. And then it's just like, uh, and then my response would be, let me see what I'm doing. If I'm free, I can come. Do you know what I'm saying? So if they don't have the facilities, this is the thing, bro. It depends. Like, not every gig you're going to play in this life is going to pay you what you're asking for. But that means that might be the door you need. The person you need might be in that room. Do you know what I'm saying? I've done gigs. This one, I'll say it plain. I've done gigs for about 70 pounds. I've met someone that's led me to be paid about 600 pounds for the same, probably even playing less. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's down to you as a person. How, how are you as a person? And what's your perspective on things? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, not everything has to be a financial exchange in music. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like producers, for example, yeah? Like when I produce stuff and I'm doing production and I, I like to do stuff with live instruments, so I would love that. I could just have a guitarist sitting next to me. Thankfully, my bro just moved from Amsterdam, so this is a blessing in disguise. But before, when I know like I'm doing this thing and I just know this song's going to be sick and I need like a guitarist here, and I call, yeah, how much is it paying, bro? Oh, uh, yeah, I can't really come up. I'm like, you don't know what you're throwing away, you know? You do not know what you're throwing away. You guys know Emmanuel, the sax player, yeah? Perfect example, yeah? One, there was one day, I forgot where I was, and no, I was in a session with, um, he's called J5, this is J Huss's producer, yeah? And then we was in the studio, and then, and then he goes to me like, ah, oh, this song needs saxophone, man, this needs saxophone. Do you know any saxophone players? I was like, yeah, 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 I do, I do. I text him real quick. I was like, yo, where are you? And he's like, I'm here. I was like, bro, come to the studio now. And he said, how much is it paying? I was like, my guy, come, just come. Oh, but bro, petrol. I said, I'll even give it to myself. Please, just come. Bro, this guy came, yeah? Have you like seen what this guy's doing now? Do you know, he played on um, the, that big Burner Boy song with Dave, Location. That's Emmanuel. The J Huss song that came out yesterday, Emmanuel, he's on Dave's album. They played at the Mercury Awards. That's all because of that one day he just came for free. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't get yourself in them environments anyhow. Do you know what I'm saying? So like I'm saying, it's down to you. How do you feel? If you feel like doing it, cool. If not, that's your own as well. Does that answer the question? Yeah? yeah I think yeah. you had one more, yeah. Yeah. In working with other mu musicians, mm -hmm. How do you deal with people who are not pulling their own weight? So. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I think as it, it, this one is hard, you know. Because yeah, because <laughs> sometimes it, it gets really annoying. Say that again, bro. Because sometimes it gets really. Oh annoying. yeah, yeah, fact, fact, fact. So I think the first thing is, um, personally for me, if it's not with my band. Obviously, my band is my band, so I know everyone's strength. Or if it's like Joe and the rest, I know these guys. But if it's like, oh, Charlie, <laughs> if it's like um, an environment I've never been in, I don't. I tend to ask who's playing, like, because I want to know like who's playing. And this is actually one thing we were saying the other day. I hate when you know when you're playing with other people and it makes you look bad. Do you know, it makes you look like it's like singers. Like when one, you can be the baddest singer. The guy next to you, his harmony and chit, like the whole thing is just, it's just, it's messed up. Do you know what I'm saying? So, how personally I deal with it, right? Especially, I think one, one um, instrument I'm hard on is keyboard players because it's down to like sound. Do you know what I mean? With keyboard. So, it's like maybe you're playing and then, oh, like, bro, one second, bro, like, just tweak your sound a little bit because sometimes it might not be the actual playing. Might be the sound that he's using. Bro, tweak your sound a little bit. It's too, it's too sharp. The, the piano's too sharp. Well, there's too much, re the factory sound has too much reverb. Or try holding back. You advise them. You just advise them and you, and you push them. However, if it gets to a point where it's not working, you speak to whoever you need to speak to. Like, yo, bro, I spoke to um, the rest of the guys and this guy is just not really working out, man. Like, and then maybe no one else has realized it. So when you bring their attention to it, yeah, it's true, you know. And then that one, you leave the conversation between whoever needs to have it. It's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to do, and it's not nice. But sometimes you have to understand 
when there's a project at hand and a project needs to be achieved, at the end of the day, your name is on it. So it's a team effort. There's no I in team. If one guy in the team, it's like a car tire. If one tire is flat, the car won't drive. So if everyone is not pulling their weight, everybody looks bad. The, the band is not good at that point. That's all? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me. <laughs> um, I would please like to ask, how is one supposed to market themselves? Say that again, bro. How am I supposed to market myself? Are you supposed to market yourself? Yeah, on social media, for example. It's easy now. It's so easy. Like, um, okay, one thing I used to do, like, back in the day when I was younger, yeah, I would post a video and I would tag everybody. Everyone. Steve Miller, Mikkel, Amps, everyone. Everyone must see this video today. Whether you like it or not, you're going to see the video. Do you know what I'm saying? And... Just keep going. I'm not saying that should be, but nowadays, I think the best way is just be creative with how you're doing the videos. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it, like, the easy way to do it is you sit there and you put, I'm just saying, you sit there, you put a camera there and you just play and then put it online. That's boring. Everyone else is doing it. It needs to be eye catching. Me and Joe was actually laughing at this the other day. You, you know, James, the keyboard player, yeah? This guy's doing videos in his robe. Like, he walks into his bedroom in his robe and starts playing. It's funny, but I'm watching it. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying come in your robe or something, but I'm saying do things in a way where it's just eye-catching because that's everything. It's like, you see McDonald's and the rest, when they want to show you a new burger, they do it in such a way that you're looking at this thing. You know it's not good for you. Jack. <laughs> You know it's not good. You know the burger's not good for you, right? But you're looking at this thing like, yo, this thing looks nice, you know. Looks nice. And then before you know it, you're walking to McDonald's. Do you know what I'm saying? There's there's this um white guy, he plays drums, like I forgot his name, but I've just seen him recently, and this guy's sick. And I just reached out to him. I was like, bro, you're so good. And he was like, bro, this means a lot, man. And I was like, so it's like his method of doing the videos worked. Do you know what I'm saying? So just try to be different. You know, what's your name again? I can always forget your name. Eliud. There can't, there can't be two Eliuds. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't, or there can't be two Stevens. You can't do what I do and expect it to work the same way. You're not going to get my clients because I, they have Steven already, but they don't have you. So you do your thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Be different. That's it. No one else? Done? Cool. Thank you for asking questions because that would have been very embarrassing if you didn't. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the event. Someone has just arrived from the O2 Arena and he's setting up making noise. So I know he's about to play. The rest of the guys are here, going to be doing some stuff. So make sure you guys answer, ask a lot of questions and just milk it, man. Enjoy the day. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you, Stephen.